Jones and Asante McGee both say they had relationships with R. Kelly. Asante says she dated him from 2014 to 2016 and lived in his home for a month. Kitty says she started dating the singer back in June 2011. She thought they were in love and in a monogamous relationship. She gave up her job as a DJ, says she moved into his Atlantic, Atlanta home in November 2011 and spent two years there. But Kitty says the relationship became violent within weeks of her arrival. She shared details of her time with R. Kelly in her book, I Was Somebody Before This. Welcome to you both. Thank you. What Thank a you. title, Kitty. What a title. Thank you. So you were in that home for two years. Yes. Um, within three weeks, he became physically abusive? It was actually Atlanta, um, Chicago, not Atlanta. Okay. Um, about two weeks after I had moved in, um, I had confronted him about a videotape that I had saw, and it was a girl that he had introduced me to, and um, that was the first time he became abusive because I noticed that the girl in the tape was someone that he had gone to court for, and he had introduced me to her, and I didn't know how to handle the information that I had just... Just to be clear, he went to court um, on child pornography charges for a sex tape he was in. The yes. prosecutors alleged he was having sex with a 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. He was acquitted because the jury said, we can't identify that woman, and so we don't know whether she was 14. So they didn't think they could prove it was a child. Right. And right. You, you know this girl, and... He introduced me to her, um, and this is 2011, so years had gone by, and this person's an older woman now, but when I saw the videotape, I realized that that was the same girl he had introduced me to, so. And how old do you believe she was in that sex tape? Um, when I did the math, compared to how old she was when he introduced her to me, she, it landed on 14. So you believe he was guilty of that charge? Yes, and I confronted him about it, and that's when he, the first time he abused me. I know you say he became extremely controlling. Yes. How so? Um, I had to wear sweatpants. I had to stand up when he would walk in a room. Um, I did have to be on his phone plan. I know that the savages did mention that. He would put a lot of his girlfriends on his phone plan so he can control, like, who you're talking to, how often you talk to your family, what you're texting, things like that. Is it true he controlled uh, things as little as you walking out of a room, you going oh, yeah. to use the bathroom, you wanting to eat? Yes. How? What, what would you have to do? Um, you would have to send a text mes message to one of his runners, um, just asking, like, you know, if you can go to the restroom, and then they'll relay the information to him. Because you weren't, like, free to walk throughout the house. You had to ask permission to go use the bathroom? Yes. Yes. And, and he would use food, you, you claim, as a punishment. Right. Um, when I met him, I was about 130 pounds. Um, when I left two years later, I was 107 pounds. So how does somebody like you, a successful DJ, live in a normal life, who you meet him at this party, how do you get sucked into a situation where you agree to these crazy terms? Right? That's a lot of people are going to be asking. Right. Um, I just, it was just a normal, the same way that if you met a guy at a gas station and you thought, okay, this is going to be, you don't have those expectations where, I mean, you, you just don't think, like, when you go into something and you give up things and you compromise, like, okay, I'm going to move to another city or another state, you know, from our relationship. When you give those things up and for love, you don't expect that that person's going to turn into something else. You're just in it. So by the time I walked away from those things, I just, which I detail in my book and it'll make more sense. No, but they ran um, you in bit by bit. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I we, just felt like I gave up everything. And then once I was there, I was just in it. And the more I, I started learning about them, I just got sucked into it, and yeah. I didn't, I felt like I didn't have anything else to go back to. Now, Sante, did you have a similar experience with him? I did. Um, when I first met him back in 2013, during the Black Panthers tour, um, he was this wonderful guy. He always made you laugh. You never saw anything wrong with him. Um, flying back and forth for two years, going to different shows, hanging out with him, he was just always this funny guy. And it was the summer of 2016, the beginning of the buffet tour. Um, he asked, he pretty much 
put me on the bus from city to city back in Dallas, Texas, and I ended up in Oklahoma. And from Oklahoma, I ended up in Atlanta. But did, did, did he control you in the way he controlled Kitty? He controlled me once I moved in. How now, so? Can you okay, give us examples? For example, when I, when I was just flying in back and forth, he would send me texts. And for instance, um, I want to say east of 2015, I went to Chicago and I sat in the hotel for like three days before even having contact with him. And the day when I was about to leave, he just texted me out the blue and said, come to the studio. And I called an Uber to the studio. I arrived there like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I told him I'm here. And he, he had his assistant put me in a Sprinter, which is a traveler van, traveling van. I sat there from like 11 o'clock in, in the morning to 8 o'clock that night. But what about, did you have to ask permission to go to the bathroom and get food and leave a room? Yes. When I was on the Sprinter, I had to use the restroom and I texted him. Daddy, I need to use the restroom. No Daddy. Response. Yes. We were required to call him Daddy. Required to? Yes. He told us to call him Daddy. You would address him as Daddy. And if you didn't, you were... Yeah, you would get in trouble if you yeah, didn't. Yeah, or slap. How many women were... You were there most recently, so how many women are in this house? At the time when I was there, it was a total of four of us, and it was two... Did you see, jo did you see Joycelyn? Yes, I did see Joycelyn. My first time seeing Joycelyn was when I was at the house... <laughs> And at this time, he told me, whenever you enter a room, you have to knock on a door and wait for permission for someone to say, come in. Do you think Joyce Lillen is there of her own free will? No, I don't. Do you think she's been brainwashed? Definitely. Because the things that he say, he, he, turn, he make you turn. He pretty much try to say that your family is jealous that you're with him, your family wants to be with him, and you're happy, and this is what you, what you need to do. And if you disobey him... He would, like, fake cry and make you sympathize, for instance, when we were in Oklahoma. He, let me just stand you by, because he, he gave us a, a statement. And he's called these accusations unjust and unfair. He says the media has not spoken to enough women who support him. And in a statement to Variety, his management team said, Kelly's music is a part of American and African-American culture that should never and will never be silenced. We will vigorously resist this attempted public lynching of a black man who has made extraordinary contributions to our culture. I have to get you to react to that. Your thoughts that, the, that this is a, a public lynching of a black man. That's bull crap. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be honest. It's, it's bull. Listen, it takes a lot of strength and guts to come out and speak publicly about having found yourself in this kind of a situation. I know it's Thank not you. easy. Thank you for doing so. Good luck with the book. Thank you. And the book is actually being turned into a film. Oh, really? Yes. My book rights were sold, so... Well, good. I mean, honestly, it's an important I, story. Thank you. I go in a lot of detail in the book, so thank you for having us. Good luck with that. Thank and we're going to stay on it and find out more as we can about Joy as well. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.